You are welcome back to Biafra Televisions once again. Today's date is 4th of May 2024 and we are still welcoming all the Biafrans all over the world right now to Biafrans program that is going on right now with the Prime Minister of the Biafra Republic Government in Eastside, Simon Ekpa. And we are assuring all the Biafrans right now to pay a very good attention because the Prime Minister is life once more addressing the United States of Bia France all over the world, making sure and possible that the freedom of Bia France will be no time past the decorations. And all we are needing from you right now is if you are coming across, you make sure you click the share button and share to as many Bia France as you could reach in order for all the Bia France to participate in this ongoing project. As you are doing that, Chuku Ogikobiyama will continue to lift you higher and higher. Over to you, sir, the Prime Minister of the Biafra Republic Government in Israel, Simon Eva. Because of the interest of other Nigerians, he was killed. Today, he is in the history. This idiot from Yoruba land, under Yoruba, who called himself the son of a fella. His father was killed. Today, he is part of the history of Nigeria. His grandmother was killed. They are now part of the history of Nigeria. The worst is that the prominent men in Yoruba land, have many of them have been murdered by Nigeria state. But whenever they have one small opportunity, they forget them even to the point that a son of a victim the guy who's supposed to be the most angered person in nigeria today whose father was murdered by injection is now calling those fighting what his father did cowards i want you people to understand that nigeria have seen in fact they have not seen what is coming God will use me to end Nigeria. Mark my word. God will use me to end Nigeria. He said. For the interest of millions of people. The atrocity of Nigeria. The prayers of many people and those that were killed by hunger. Those children. They are crying. God to God. And God will use many years. To mold this time i told them from the beginning you see i have come to end the journey of this biafra struggle this year after biafra declaration on the second of december we will know who is going to run away from the south south and southeast i have no other update to give you but i have come to assure those criminals and terrorists in nigeria state that god will use me to end nigeria and the end of Nigeria has begun. When Mazen Ambikano was preaching, he said, Somali will be better than Nigeria. <laughs> Are you not seeing it? The good news is that at the end, freedom will come. And the West continue to make mistake of allowing us in Africa to carry gun before they're listening to us. The mistake we are done in Sudan in Ethiopia, in Eritrea, in many places. Something that we can resolve amicably. Ordinary asking for freedom is a problem. The people you will kill you for asking for your freedom. And if you don't defend yourself, your history will be gone. It will be wiped away from the surface of the earth. Mm -hmm. And today, we will not be wiped away by Nigeria. Because we have come to end it. Our forefathers paid the heaviest price of being in Nigeria, and we are not going to leave that particular price for our children unborn to pay. We will end it in this generation. So from the 2nd of December, the music will change. Nigeria we don't Nigeria don't know what is coming. We will show them that the people you killed in the 60s, we have never forgotten them. The scars is very fresh. 
the humiliation on our children. They were, they were dying and they saw all those stomach being swelled up and they were dying in thousands on daily basis, mm -hmm. up to 3 million. Nigeria is evil and must end. The only way to end it is when they come with AK-47, you bring your, your own AK-47. When they come with bomb, you bring your own bomb. Mm -hmm. It is fire for fire, gun mm -hmm. for gun, until the world will listen to us. Mm -hmm. that's and that's listening to us they have ignored us for many years mm -hmm. this year will be the day the, the, the year mm -hmm. that the Biafra and our own cry will ring a bell mm -hmm. to the highest level mm -hmm. thank you Biafrans in UK <laughs> thank you sir <laughs> thank you my lord um... uh, let me promise one thing you know any place I go I always promise and I want to fulfill that promise Whenever so, the promise I'm making to the United Kingdom today, the France in the United Kingdom, is that when I was in the U.S. a few weeks ago last week, I promised them that uh, the satellite radio and all that will be and the TV will be uh, on air. And today we have the satellite TV, we have the satellite radio, and what I promise and what I'm still promising here is that. We will start now we have tested the radio and it is working in a bony state we are going to start from the uh coastal uh biafra to the hinterland we already have some transmitters in the hinterland so acquire bomb state the former acquire bomb state in the next two weeks we have voice of biafra satellite radio all over acquire bomb that's my promise in the next two weeks we are going to have them in acquire bomb and from there spread to Ugocha, spread to Bayosa, spread to all the coastal delta before we come to the hinterland. That is the promise I'm making to you. But it starts in the next two weeks from today. Thank you. There we Thank you, sir. Obatobie! Obatobie! Masi Boniface, please. Um, ben Chuk's hand has been up for a long time. Do attend to him, please. Yeah, um, we have. There is time for um, um for donations, but uh, we have we are following the program. Um, Mazi Ben Chus, don't worry, you will usher your own um, submission. But, but we have a presentation. Okay, we have a presentation. We want to present? Yeah, please. After the presentation, you can go ahead, please, sir. There. You are. Um, my uh, wonderful family, UK family. I recognize everybody here. Those in the cabinet, um, PM's cabinet, we recognize all of you. Uh, you are all supportive in UK. Everything that will make UK to be moving forward, you are always gathered around to see that it is being done and on time. I recognize all of you present here. They will know. So please, I may not go one by one to recognize all of you but i recognize your presence in this meeting when the time comes we shall be omitted for you to um, take your own submission but we have a presentation now we are following our program we have a presentation we want to present our um, we have um, a teenager here in uk very intelligent the other day he went to he, he made a presentation in one of the Igbo unions so we said no um well, he must come here and do this presentation another presentation concerning the diaphragm war and its uh, importance today i'm calling on ben Obodefuna. ben if you are here you can raise your hand a very brilliant is a very guru a bitcoin in guru is very good in a, a guru in bitcoin even in this our um uh, usdt he is very good he teaches people around him um, the how to transact how to trade with the usdt so he's a very good guy and a, a teenager very brilliant yeah from a mother so then my minister, you can see Ben, so that he can be... On your camera and unmute yourself. Hello. Hello. Um, 
Greetings, Prime Minister, and greetings, fellow Biafran. Um, on your ben, can you on your camera, please? Um, since I'm on the 18, um, I just I prefer to keep my camera off for privacy reasons. Uh, if that's okay. Okay. Cool. Um. So yeah. Um. Afambo is a Chinadu over there for now, and today I'll be presenting um five interesting facts about um the Biafran War. So I'd like to screen, like share my screen so if somebody could give me post permission so I could do that. Okay. Um, give a co-host please. COS please uh grant him co host. COS are you there? Yes I'm here. Oh, what's his name right. please? Ben's iPad. Ben's iPad. Okay. Ben's iPad. Okay. Great. All right. Done. Ben, you can go ahead. Um. Okay. So. Uh, see my screen uh ben before you continue please i hope um, none of your content has any gory images right uh yeah yeah there's no gory images all right right on can you see uh, um can you see my screen yeah okay, Very cool. Very cool. okay. so uh be for more quick overview um the biafran war also known as the nigerian civil war took place between 1967 and 1970 due to ethnic and political divisions between nigeria's Igbo dominated southeast and the Hausa fulani led north colonel odemegu ojuku led biafra to declare independence in 1967 which led to a military intervention by the nigerian government headed by General Yakubu Gowon. The conflict included intense battles, human rights violations, and a severe humanitarian crisis, with an estimated one to three million deaths from famine and disease. Despite initial successes by Biafra, the Nigerian led and the Nigerian military, sorry, backed by international support from countries like Britain and the Soviet Union eventually were victorious. The war concluded in 1970 with Biafra's capitulation and its reintegration into Nigeria, significantly shaping the nation's political and ethnic dynamics of today. So an introduction. One of the unique things about Biafra in the history of warfare is that not only was Biafra fighting a war, but simultaneously Biafra was also building a nation state which includes fully functioning institutions such as the Central Bank of Biafra, University of Biafra, ministries and law courts. For example, people were still going to court for petty cases and receiving punishments or getting married in a church as a normal society would whilst fighting the war. This is what makes Biafra unique and things like this are what should be celebrated in history. So, number one. The post-war £20 policy. So, at the end of the war, a Nigerian panel concluded that every Igbo person who had an account in any Nigerian bank before the Civil War was to receive £20. At the beginning of the Civil War, Igbo people took their money out of Nigerian banks and changed it to the bank um, to the Biafran currency. After the war, the Nigerian government took control of bank accounts belonging to Biafrans. A Nigerian committee decided to give each Igbo person a new bank account with just £20 in it. This meant that there were multi millionaires who were stripped of all their money and forced to rebuild off of a mere £20. Despite this, though, the eastern region still grew to become bigger than most of the other regions of Nigeria today, despite the harsh conditions they were forced to build their economy back up from. But what many people don't know is that is what happened to the money that was stripped from the Biafrans. In 1972, two years after the war concluded, 
the Nigerian government released the in, um, indigenization decree, which mandated all foreign, all foreign, especially British companies, to be either fully or partly owned by Nigerians. A decree that the Igbos did not benefit from, and it's believed that the money used to finance the purchase of these private interests was on the other side of that twenty pounds. Number two, Biafra's crude oil refineries. During the Biafran War, faced with e uh, faced with an economic blockade limiting the access to petroleum products, products, um, the Biafrans ingen ingeniously established makeshift crude oil refineries. Leveraging local expertise and traditional refining methods for palm oil, they improvised equipment using available uh, materials like old barrel and pipes. This community-driven effort, coupled with training initiatives, enabled them to produce sufficient refined petroleum products to sustain their economy and military operations throughout the conflict. This technology the Biafra's created is still being used by the likes of the Russians today. Number three, the hijacking of planes. During the Biafra war, Biafra militants hijacked four planes, including two Nigerian Airways planes and two BOAC, which is the British Overseas Airways Corporation planes. On July 10th, 1968, diverting them to the uh, Ulai airstrip in Biafra. This dramatic act was an attempt to draw international attention to the plight of the Biafran people and the humanitarian crisis caused by the Nigerian government's blockade and military offence. While the passengers and the crew were released unharmed, the hijacking was widely condemned by the international community, including the Nigerian and British governments, as an act of terrorism and a violation of international law. Despite the international attention generated, the hijacking did not significantly alter the course of the Biafran war or lead to a resolution of the conflict. 